What's going on, everybody? I am Winston A. Marshall, a.k.a. The Swaggy Blurred, and this is The Blurred Breakdown, the show that lets you know what had happened was. Now, if this is your first time here, man, please be sure that you hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and if you like the content that's coming out in the video, man, definitely throw a like on it. Check out all the stuff that I got going on on the channel. Uh, I first of all, I want to apologize to those of you that have been rocking with me recently, uh, the fact that I haven't been around. It's been both some good and some bad news. Uh, the main good news has truly been that uh, I, I booked a pretty big uh, commercial gig, um, and that process has already started. For those of you that are familiar with the industry, you know that stuff comes at you quick. You book it, and the next thing you know, fittings and rehearsals and all sorts of stuff uh, next week as well. So it's going to be pretty crazy for me. Uh, but the main reason I haven't been able to do it, I've actually tried to record a number of different times. Um, my computer is not acting properly right now, um, which is really frustrating. Um, I'm hoping that uh, by, depending on how this commercial pans out, that I can, uh, you know, do an upgrade soon. We'll see. Uh, but I am working on a solution so that hopefully this doesn't happen again in the future. It was definitely one of those, oh, you're crapping out on me. Well, I have to run now. I don't have time to kind of sort all this out. So I'm hoping this is going to uh, resolve itself relatively quickly. I will keep you posted. But I had to find a way to get you a blurred breakdown this week because there was some stuff, like culturally, it was just kind of fun to talk about or debate or whatever. But then there was some massive news, especially in the nerd sphere that dropped uh, over the last 24 to 48 hours, so I had to come in and give it to you. So the one thing, pause. Uh, <laughs> the one thing that I really did want to do and make sure continued to happen is that the show continues to grow and look good. So as I go on to the first story, let me introduce you to the new overlay, bitches. Oh, it's looking so good and crispy. Got got everything. They got the got the text and the ooh. Anyway. Let's jump right into the main story of this Blurred Breakdown, and that is Bodomeo versus Disney. Now, shortly after X-Men 97 premiered on Disney+, Plus, head writer Bodomeo was unceremoniously fired by Marvel Studios. Interviews that had already been scheduled with the press were canceled, and rumors started swirling about his dismissal. For example, we'd heard he'd been an absolute nightmare to deal with on a daily basis, with it later being alleged that DeMeo's non-nude OnlyFans account raised concerns with Disney higher-ups. Apparently, they found his behavior on the platform unsettling and creepy. DeMeo initially remained silent, but soon started answering fan questions on X, breaking down key creative decisions in episodes of X-Men 97, offering some undeniably fascinating insights into the making of the Disney Plus series, uh, which followed a lot of those, if not all of them. Uh, his breakdown specifically of, uh, you know, Remember Me, uh, Remember It, and how that was supposed to be an allegory for, uh, you know, the 90s, and, you know, and specifically the transition of the safety of the 90s for the first few episodes uh, and the nostalgia and the 9-11 happens and what that meant for how people started moving about the world, how politics changed and all that. I thought that was an incredible breakdown. So honestly, I thought that was good. However, the writer who also worked on Moon Knight and Blade for the Marvel Studios also made it clear that he'd have no involvement with season two beyond what he had already contributed all while stopping short of revealing exactly why he and Disney parted ways. DeMeo has recently taken some shots at Disney and Marvel Studios for excluding him from X-Men 97's Emmy campaign, and in an explosive social media post, he may have shed some light onto why he was really fired. Now, the writer claims that he that after he shared some X-Men fan art, which you can see here, depicting him as a scantily clad Cyclops, Marvel Studios sent a letter notifying me that they had stripped me of my season two credit due to a post. Sadly, this is the latest in a troubling pattern I suffered while working on X-Men 97 and Blade, he said. Um, I have to, I'll have more to say about it soon, but I first got to take a break from social media to find a safer place for me to post about it. Proud, nerdy. Uh, proud, out, and nerdy, he says. Now, Marvel Studios, a studio that rarely issues statements about what happens behind the scenes, has hit back at DeMeo pointing to egregious misconduct being the reason for the initial March 2024 firing. Mr. DeMeo was terminated in March 2024 following an internal investigation, the studio told The Hollywood Reporter. Given the egregious nature of the findings, we severed ties with him immediately, and he has no further affiliation with Marvel. The trade has since shared further insights from inside sources, revealing that following his exit, 
And this is why it sounds like he lost his season two credits. But following his exit, an agreement was reached between the two parties over the issue of tweeting about the show, something that DeMeo has continued to occasionally do. In light of the breaches, his credit for season two was removed. So it sounds like uh, as they had parted ways, the contract that they kind of signed was, all right, you're not going to be talking about the show. Like, you're obviously, you created all that, but if we're going separate way, don't tweet about stuff, don't anything. And the funny thing is, I'm sure some of the plot stuff is one thing. I think anytime he started taking swipes, then maybe Disney got a little pissed off about that. But uh, while no details, they, they continue to say, while no details of the cause of termination or internal reviews have surfaced, sources say it involves sexual misconduct. Now, Marvel Studios is no longer holding back, and it appears uh, DeMeo's repeated tweet alongs were the reason for him losing his season two credit. If we had to hazard a guess, that came after an unlikely uh, that came after a likely agreement about him no longer sharing unofficial reveals and insights, which saw his name appear in headlines week after week. The trade alluded to the egregious nature of his behavior being alleged sexual misconduct. However, it's Jeff Snyder who has decided to elaborate on what reportedly happened during DeMeo's time in charge of the show. It's claimed that DeMeo sent nude photos of himself in sexually suggestive hero poses to several young male staffers working on X-Men 97. His excuse was that they could use it as an inspiration for the animated series. The head writer was told to stop sending these photos, but allegedly continued. Snyder also claims that DeMeo groped an assistant on multiple occasions and was considered emotionally and physically abusive towards staffers. More details can be found about this on his newsletter, The In Snyder, uh, and it appears DeMeo has chosen this, is, this as a hill to die on. As you can see in some of these other tweets, he says the truth will be revealed. After their Disney Plus disaster, Marvel wants to mislead with alleged contract breaches over tweets. It's tragic. And then this is their usual playbook, legal letters as well as other items to prove a long-standing pattern to follow. It's about finding a safe outlet. Thanks for your faith and patience. So not really directly um, addressing the stuff that Snyder brought up because that wasn't brought up by Disney per se. That was released by Snyder as far as his inside scoop. We don't know if it's true or not. However, Brian Friedman, DeMeo's lawyer, who in the past few years has sued Disney on behalf of such clients as former ESPN broadcaster Sage Steele, told Deadline this. Having much experience with Disney, the playbook is always the same. Family friendly on the outside, but secretly attempting to plant illegal, unconscionable items in contracts that silence the truth and stop the employee slash customer from asserting basic constitutional rights. As we will explain through detailed examples, which we will roll out in detail one by one, Disney's model is very clear and a repetitive illegal pattern. Once it gets challenged or exposed, the gaslighting and redirection of the blame toward anyone willing to tell the truth starts through an intentional, well-oiled publicity machine. The problem for Disney is that when they go up against someone who is concrete evidence of this happening over 100 times, many of which have led to them settling hundreds of cases, if not thousands, to try and continue to control critics, employees, and even lawyers who sue them. The problem for them is that I have the evidence and clients willing to be truthful, and they know it. These are actual facts, not argument or conjecture. Over the next few months, with the brave help of those who have been illegally silenced, retaliated for simply telling the truth, and then destroyed for it, one by one, this bullying and illegal conduct will be exposed to the government. Bo DeMeo wants nothing more from Marvel or Disney except the truth. He will bravely tell the truth. So will I. Stand by. That is a lot to unpack. Okay, first of all, uh, it's, I think it's as simple to say as this. If you're not familiar with the Disney Plus stuff, uh, bringing up a customer, what that was specifically about, you can go and check it out. I know uh, Philip DeFranco here on YouTube is a big news guy. I love watching his stuff. Uh, he covered this on, I believe, his Wednesday show. But if you go ahead and Google the story, there was a family that went to uh, one of the Disney parks. They were at one of the Disney restaurants. The wife had a nut allergy and specifically asked to make sure, you know, my food does not have nuts on it, et cetera, et cetera. They were told three, four times over, no, the food was handled with care. There's no nuts in it. There were nuts in it and she died. But the husband then went to go and try and sue Disney, um, you know, for, you know, negligent death, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's when it came up that apparently when you sign your terms and conditions of Disney Plus, you actually have something in that 
contract that you signed that says that if you are harmed by Disney in any way, uh, whether it be at their parks or whatever, that you actually agree to third party arbitration and not to actually take them to court. And that has been blowing up recently and driving people crazy uh, hearing all this because that's an insane thing to do. That is insane that if I sign up for your streaming service, that if I get hurt on a roller coaster at your park, I can't take action. That <laughs> that if I go to see, you know, Thunderbolts, or I go see Captain America Brave New World in a theater and something happens because of like some crazy, I, I can't sue you. None of this makes sense. That's the most ridiculous, egregious thing to do, but it reminds me fully of the Sentai Pad episode of South Park. If you're not familiar with that, there's a very uh, funny, pretty famous episode about people not reading terms and conditions where all everybody uh, you know, wants to get iPads and Kyle gets one, but he doesn't read the iTunes terms and conditions, so he ends up getting kidnapped and forced into a human centipede, uh, but instead a human Sentai Pad scenario. And when they go to try and fight it, it's like, well, he signed for it. He, you know, it is what it is. So on the one hand, it's a little funny to see the South Park prediction come true. But on the other hand, it is, and more importantly, it's just disgusting and gross that this poor family, I bring all that to say, you are now seeing, uh, you had Victoria Alonzo and then this Disney Plus thing that kind of happened, but then Bo here. Now, if Bo did these things, DeMeo genuinely was sending, you know, new, like essentially nude photos of himself to young staffers. If, if he was sexually, uh, you know, assaulting or groping random folks in the office or anywhere, honestly, then I'm sorry. You, you don't get your job back. You don't get to sue. Like, that's effed up. If there's true evidence that that's what was going on, then nope, that's... There's no coming back. But but if there's any of this that's any sort of stretch or making stuff up or whatever, that's that's effed up pretty bad. Um, I think the thing that'll be the most interesting about this, though, it seems that it was going to be a bad look for Disney regardless about doing this. And, and I read another report somewhere that supposedly Bo was let go from The Witcher were uh, similar behavior as far as like talking out and things like that. I don't know about it, about it sending nude photos or harassing anybody, but as far as like constantly bad mouthing and talking out on The Witcher, so there's also a conversation about Brad Winterbaum being, you know, maybe not doing as much due diligence. And so within the the Marvel, I've, again, I read this, I want to believe on Variety or, or Hollywood Reporter, one of the two, about the idea of not the, the blame not being on Kevin at all, but then, uh, mainly because Brad didn't maybe do his due diligence um, on Bo and why he left The Witcher in the first place. But all that being said, it is going to be a very interesting scenario of how this plays out step by step here. If any of what Snyder is saying is true, that's pretty damning evidence to start your case of Disney wrongfully terminated me for things. That's, that's not great. But at the same time, if this is some sort of ugly smear campaign, because there was, again, the back forth with Victoria Alonso of this idea of, you know, oh, Disney saying she was out here abusing, uh, you know, post-production people and putting them through grueling hours and, and being abusive and all that kind of stuff. And Victoria and her team was saying, well, we, as, you know, as a queer woman, the idea of her speaking out against the Don't Say Gay Bill while Disney was already kind of having their tussle back and forth with Ron DeSantis in Florida, that that was the reasoning that they were terminated. Uh, I need to circle back around and see if anything else has come out about that. I haven't seen anything in the major headlines recently. So you do have two instances now of two queer people of color in high up positions being let go. And so, but then again, the question becomes, because it feels like this weird pattern here, is it because they genuinely were bad people that did bad things and so Disney is like doing the right thing and being like nah y'all got to y'all got to go or is it a situation of again a smear campaign it's 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 kind of hard to tell but they they look similar enough to to with some of the 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 Venn diagram of what these are that it's like wow okay once is an instance twice is a coincidence three times is a pattern with this being the second time you're getting closer and closer to the idea of a pattern but who knows who genuinely knows. I want to know what you think based off of what you've heard so far, what you're seeing. 
do you think that Bo was wrongfully terminated and Disney's up to some stuff? Or do you think that, you know, the stuff that Cider talked about sounds true to you? Like, where do you think this whole thing kind of sits? Because it is a very complicated mess. I'll definitely be sure to be talking about it more um, as more news comes out. Remember, everything that was said here is allegedly, and this was a reporter from The Hollywood Reporter, uh, Variety, and Comic Book News. Uh, Comic Book Movie News, if you want to check out the articles directly. Um, but yeah, let me know down in the comments, and let's go on to the next one, man. So, Jaden, Jaden, Jaden. Oh, man. So, if y'all aren't familiar with Jaden Smith, uh, Will Smith's son, homie, is a you know, a artist in and of himself. And he's out here in his 20s doing his thing, getting some booty, all that kind of stuff, man. Uh, He was dating a woman named Saab Zada and normally be out with her. But it seems like, according to TMZ here that caught these photos, that he might be done with Saab Zaba because Will Smith's son is in Ibiza right now with an influencer named Cleopatra. That's who he's you see kissing on this yacht picture here. Uh, there are some pretty wild photos, none of them that are like nude, nude, nothing like that, but close enough that I'm not going to fight with YouTube and get ad dollars taken down. If you want to check it out, you can go to TMZ. I'll put a link to the article um, and TMZ's full reporting in the description. Uh, but Jaden's with Cleopatra and is all over her grabbing on that booty, sucking on face, in the water, on the deck, pretty much everywhere, getting it on. Well, as much as we see uh, from a paparazzi standpoint, Jaden and Cleopatra certainly don't look like this is a first date. They seem very comfortable with each other, smiling, laughing, and having a good time. But if it is a first date, it's the best one ever. TMZ, y'all some cheeky moments. Jaden's wearing compression shorts under a swimsuit, but Cleopatra's leaving very little of the imagination because her black thong bikini is itty-bitty, providing plenty of real estate for Jaden's hands. At one point, Jaden even whipped out his phone and snapped some photos of sunbathing Cleopatra. Clearly, they're very into each other. But the thing is, Jaden was photographed just last week with Saab. Uh, Saab, again, being his, uh, I guess now, ex-girlfriend. Uh, they were enjoying a night out at the Nice Guy in West Hollywood. Jaden and Saab, a model slash singer, have been together since 2020. But based on what we're seeing here, it seems that something has changed. The TMZ reached out to Jaden's camp, but there was no word back. Okay. So, yeah, um, here we are. Uh, I find it just kind of funny, man, that, like, we all up in this kid's face. Now, mind you, if Jaden's out here just, you know, getting in entanglements, then I'm not surprised that <laughs> that this is going to pop up and then people are going to be up in the business, but, like, who knows? I mean, yes, that's a, that's a switch. They were together last week. It's very possible that they broke up, but but being that close, I think, is the thing that TMZ was getting at. Was like, hey, oh, that that that's real PDA in public like that. If you were just with the homie, you were just with your girl a week ago. Who knows? But no, it could be an open relationship. People do that stuff nowadays, like all sorts of things. I don't know. All I know is. Both these girls is bad. I, I I wish when I was his age that I had had game like that in abs, man. I I, I would probably have been a tear. Oh, man, I would have been a tear. That's terrible. Yeah, but uh, I I <laughs> I I hope I really hope that he didn't cheat on this young lady on Saab. I don't know any either of these women. I've never heard of them before. Uh, I you know I guess it's in the influencer world, whatnot. I I'm not familiar with them, but they both bad than a motherfucker. I, that's all I can say. Both got titties. Both got ass. Oh, very cute in the face. I, I, I don't know. The, the, the new one, Cleopatra, kind of looks like Doja Cat. I love me some Doja Cat. God, I love me some Doja Cat. Anyway, I, I'm curious what you think, man. Uh, you know, is, is Jaden just out here living his his best young life? You hate to see him in an entanglement. I said it again because that's exactly what it quote unquote looks like. I, that's what we call that now. Uh, I want to know what you think, man. Hell, uh, you know, how about this? Which of the three are the best looking between Jaden, Cleopatra, and Saab? You seen their photos? Which one of the three is is the best looking? I'm going for Saab, man. Saab, she a bad motherfucker. <laughs> But uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, all right, let's go on to the next. Speaking of people looking bad than a motherfucker, let's go on to the next one. Tracy Ellis Ross, the queen, the goddess. Oh, my God. Aunt Tracy, man, she's, uh, I believe, 51 now. Uh, recently put out some photos of her, some thirst traps. Now, it's not, I, I put a a blur on this, not because... They out here, she's very carefully covering up, so you can't really see anything. 
But you can see enough. You can see like the the the, the, the enough boob around. Didn't want to fight with YouTube. I didn't, so I just went ahead and blurred it. If you want to find it, it's very easy to find on Twitter. But that's not why we're here. We're here because there are haters. Haters as far as the eye can see, and for whatever reason, Black Twitter is the place that all the haters come out and just talk that shit, and then we have a discourse. So there's this woman. Her name is Paris. She said, I have thoughts, but y'all not going to be calling me a hater for telling the truth. And her essentially this saying this here, you know, laughing my ass off. It's going to be interesting in the scope of things. Do you notice women equate fun to promiscuity and denounce aging uh, to aid in the lack of maturity? <laughs> her life doesn't stop because she gets older. She's just having fun is always a sentence aiding in some whole shit for an old bitch. You are a rude mofo, man. So you had a black, another black woman call her out and being like, imagine seeing this photo set of Tracy Ellis Ross and calling her a hoe and an old bitch as another woman. This ain't even her first topless photo, which, yes, Tracy, as you can see, again, I went and blurred that a little bit, not because it's extra bad, but I don't want to fight with YouTube and I don't want to fight with Instagram once I post like the short version of this. So, yeah, uh, that is really what was going on in the, the discourse. So, first of all, look, I get that some of y'all are prudes. And that's just how you operate. That's how you roll. You don't F with a lot of, you know, sex stuff and things like that going on. I think people can do whatever the hell they want, bro. Tracy doesn't have any kids, so you can't even use the argument, oh, you're embarrassing your kids, you're embarrassing your family. And even if they were, like, she didn't do, it's still her body. She didn't do full-on nudes. I get, like, the kid argument only in the sense that, like, other kids are savages. It's not even because it's like you shouldn't do your thing. It's just that other kids are savages and... You don't necessarily want to be the kid on the playground that you're like, I saw your mama's booty hole on OnlyFans. <laughs> like, there's a there's a real thing where, again, I fully support people doing sex work, doing OnlyFans, all that. But for the sake uh, if and if you did it before you had kids too, whatever. It was your body, you lived your life, who the fuck cares? There is something very specifically, though, about just, you know, Whoever you are, father, mother, doesn't matter. Yo, yo, dangalang, yo, 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 titties popping out now on the internet so that other little kids can do it. Wait till they're at least adults. By then, you can throw hands, they can throw hands, it's all that. I can only imagine, like, the things I used to get teased for as far as just being, like, the fat kid and all that. And we used to call people, yo, mama, your mama's such a hoe, you know, like, just all that shit. We used to do all that. Y'all seen Wildin' Out, all that kind of stuff, man. Like, you know black people playing the dozens. I cannot imagine if my mom had said, say, been Kim Kardashian and the fact that they're, like, that happened way before the kids. But it gets brought up because of that's how she initially got famous and all that kind of stuff. Like, I, I just couldn't be me, man. But it is what it is. I, I think that more power to Tracy... Whether, she, you know, regardless of whatever, she's a grown-ass woman. She look fine as hell. She should do her thing. And all you haters, like, coming at a woman, again, doing with her body that she wants to do. She can do what she wants. She's been super successful. She looks good. If I looked that good at 51, I would probably have my dangling out on the internet talking about, you see the, the, this fucking V down to my thing? I... I would be doing that. I'm going to be real. So I got absolutely no hate for Tracy doing this, but I'm curious what you think, man. Are you on the same boat? Are you Tracy do it or are you a square? That's right. I said it. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. And let's go on to our last two stories, talking some sports. This was some ma pretty major sports news that was popping off this week. <sighs> well, I'm glad I'm not a Vikings fan. Uh, but if you are, I'm sure you already heard that rookie quarterback J.J. McCarthy is going to miss the 2024 season after having to have knee surgery. This is coming from Kevin Seifert from ESPN. J.J. McCarthy's 2024 season is over before it officially began. The Minnesota Vikings rookie quarterback will be sidelined until 2025 after undergoing surgery Wednesday to repair a torn meniscus in his right knee, Coach Kevin O'Connell said. The report, excuse me, the news ruptured the increasing optimism around McCarthy's on-field progress and left the team with veteran Sam Darnold, who signed a one-year contract worth $10 million in March as the likely 2024 starter. God damn. I wish I could be kind of mid at my job compared to all of my competitors and make $10 million a year. If I remember correctly, I believe that he is like 21 and 30 as an overall record. And I want to say in the last whatever, he's like 10 and 15. And he's still making $10 million this year. God damn. <laughs> 
The other quarterbacks on the Vikings roster, 2023 holdovers, Nick Mullins and Jaron Hall. So I see Josh Dobbs got up out of there because he had a really great first game and then it kind of fell off the wagon. Speaking Wednesday from the Cleveland Browns uh, practice facility in Brea, Ohio, where the Vikings will practice this week, O'Connell did his best to put an optimistic spin on the tough news. He's confirmed everything that I hope to see early in training camp through his performance last Saturday, O'Connell said. But our fan base and everyone should just be excited about the fact that we've got our young franchise quarterback, I believe, in the building. And now it's about the unique aspect of continuing a very critical development process for him, where maybe the physical reps aren't going to be there in the short term, but this is going to be a small bump in the road. McCarthy was injured at some point during the Saturday preseason game against the Las Vegas Raiders. The rookie reported ongoing soreness to team medical officials on Monday. McCarthy, the number 10 overall pick of the April draft, will be the fourth first-round quarterback in this century who did not play a regular season game as a rookie, joining Green Bay's Jordan Love, Washington's Jason Campbell, uh, that was back in 05, and then Cincinnati's Carson Palmer back in 03. Other quarterbacks in our league have gone through similar things early on in their journey and came back better and stronger than ever, and that is not only my expectation, but I know that is going to happen for J.J. O'Connell said. We'll have a great plan for him, not only in the quarterback room with those other guys, but as, but a process so that him and I can continue to build our rapport and make sure the day-to-day pro- football process this goes on. Uh, the Vikings drafted McCarthy as a long-term replacement for Kirk Cousins, who departed in free agency and signed with the Atlanta Falcons, and that was after he tore his, I believe, Achilles last year. Okay. The rest of this isn't as important, so let me talk about this first, and we'll get to the last sports story. This sucks. This really, really sucks. I am so sorry for the Vikings fans that are watching this uh, or that have obviously heard this news all week this week. And the main reason for that is, um, and I've seen other uh, sports people, like actual analysts and talking heads talk about it, you are now a year behind from knowing if this is potentially your guy. Think about for a second, I know they mentioned these other pieces, but like one of them was Jordan Love, right? Jordan Love didn't not play because he got hurt. Jordan Love didn't play because he was drafted in the similar manner that Aaron Rodgers was to Brett Favre. To be the next generation coming in, they saw an opportunity to go take somebody that they really liked and they wanted and they brought him in. So Jordan sat behind Aaron the whole time. And then when it was time for him to go uh, and he left for the, the Jets, ironically, just like Brett Favre, Jordan Love stepped up and actually went off last year. Had a great season last year and uh, ended up ruining the Cowboys' <laughs> dreams. But he's he ended up being good from that. You're not going to be able to really see what J.J. can do this year. And heaven forbid, if he really isn't that good, you're going to be in a horrible situation then going forward. You lost a year where you could have potentially went and found the guy. How many have busted? Look look at Sam Darnold. I bring up as an example. Again, I'm not trying to take shots, but Carolina thought that he was the answer after Cam Newton left, and he was not. No, he went to the Jets first. I got it backwards. He went to the Jets first and then went down to Carolina. He went to the Jets first. He was there for two years. The Jets are just a dumpster fire of an organization, as we see with how they've handled Hassan Reddick and all of that. Then he was with the Panthers for a year. That did not go well. That was supposed to be the replacement for Cam Newton. Didn't work out. Then he was playing back up in San Francisco to Purdy, and now he's with the Vikings as a backup, but it looks like we'll end up being the starter. Um, And, yeah, while I'm here, let me make sure I have his record. So, yeah, so his record right here, looking at this, he is 21 and 35. So it's not very good. Last year, uh, 0-1 in a start. Year before that, 4-2 uh, in Carolina. Year before that, 4-7. and seven. Then in, in New York, the year before that, 2-10. and 10. Year before that, 7-6. and six. Year before that, 4-9. and nine. So it has not been good. And there are reports that J.J., had, uh, and by not J.J. McCarthy, but Justin Jefferson saying, you know, we have all the faith in the world in Sam and all that. And that's what you're supposed to say because that's your guy now. Um, but I don't. Until I see something different, unless he, like, really has a crazy year, you're now in a division with Jared Goff, who got the Lions back to the NFC, uh, who got the Lions to the NFC Championship game first time in, what, I don't know how long, and almost made it to the Super Bowl. We're actually very close in pulling it off. You're in a division with a J- Jordan Love, who we were just talking about. Jordan just got paid out the ass, was made the highest paid quarterback in the league for all of like a week, I think, something like that, because, you know, that thing changes like a revolving door. Once quarterbacks start getting paid, everybody gets a little bit more. But Jordan had one season, and they were willing to commit that kind of money to him. And then you've got Caleb Williams, who was supposed to be, you know, the second coming of quarterback Jesus out in Chicago. So 
I don't think that the Vikings are going to necessarily be making as much noise. I think they're still a good team, so they can definitely steal some games away from the division and win some games throughout the year. But I don't think Sam Darnold is the guy that's going to get you over the hump. This ain't like a Nick Foles hiding as a secret weapon in the playoffs to go win the Super Bowl type shit. This is we got to work with what we got type shit. But I'm curious what you think. How do you feel on the situation? Are you a Vikings fan? What do you do from here? Or, you know, do you feel bad for Justin Jefferson? Because, you know, he just signed his big contract and he's just lost a year with someone who might be his quarterback because, like, things worked well with Kirk Cousins. Uh, you know, he still ate pre- relatively well last year, but not as well without having his guy. So what do you think about the entire situation? Let me know down in the comments. Let's talk about the last, and that is about Brandon Ayuk. Brandon is in the midst of contract negotiations with the 49ers. And Ayuk, it sounds like, wants a final adjustment to his 49ers contract offer. This is from uh, Ali Thanawala over at Yahoo Sports. The last hurdle for Brandon Ayuk and the 49ers to agree to is a lucrative, to a lucrative contract uh, extension appears to be the final non-guaranteed year of a potential deal. NFL Media's Mike Garofalo Reported Friday that Ayuk on the 49ers and the 49ers are on the same page regarding the first three years of the proposed contract, but the star wide receiver wants an adjustment to a non-guaranteed fourth year. The 49ers feel like they have already caved enough and caved more than they wanted to, Garofalo told Puck Sports host Jason Puck Puckett. Really? That's your name? <laughs> on the weekly Mike Garofalo show on Friday. They have come up significantly from their offering in the spring. My reporting is that they are pretty much agreed to over the first three years of the deal, which is usually the hard part. That's the guarantee, the cash flow, the average per year over the first couple of years, average per year that Ayuk just wants, an adjustment in the final year of the deal, which is not guaranteed. That year is never guaranteed, and we've seen a lot of wide receivers and agents put big numbers on that in that last year to inflate the average per year. It doesn't sound like that. And they want more of a meaningful adjustment to that year, but it's still not guaranteed something that the 49ers could walk away from. That's where the standoff is right now. I've called it uncomfortable and contentious at times. I think it's still that, but it's really close to getting done. That's why the 49ers have said we're not going to make a move and trade him away because we feel like we can still get this deal done. Now, Garofalo reported Tuesday that Ayuk and the Niners had exchanged contract offers that were within range of each other and that the 26-year-old wideout was waiting for San Francisco to make a decision on a final item. Based on Garofalo's reporting last Friday, the obstacle standing in the way is the last year. We already talked about that, yada, yada, yada. The 49ers reportedly have a trade framework in place with the Pittsburgh Steelers to send Ayuk to the Steel City. It's clear the desire is to work something out, though, with the former first-round draft pick to keep him in San Francisco. Okay. It sounds like Ayuk has never wanted to leave the Bay. Honestly, and why would you? You 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 were a uh, you know a bad decision from the coin flip and overtime from winning the Super Bowl. Honestly, you, like that was the only thing. I still can't believe that the Niners didn't know the new overtime rules going into a championship game. There is no way that wasn't on a major memo. Hey, study this. I don't know who I'm most disappointed in at, at that point. It, it's got to be the coach. Got to be Shanahan. But, like, quarterback centers, line, like, middle linebackers, all the dudes are supposed to be the super smartest dudes in the room because they have to know what's going on. They didn't know nothing. None of the coaching staff knew nothing. You were just like, oh, yeah, go for it. And you're going to let Patrick Mahomes essentially get an extra goddamn down and go score a touchdown to lose the Super Bowl. You, you deserve to lose. And I, I genuinely, at this point, I've said this, unless the Cowboys can just go off and finally get their act together and win a Super Bowl, I hope the Chiefs win. I hope they get a three-peat and do the one thing that's never been done in the NFL. I think that would be super sick at this point. So here we are. But either way, Ayuk doesn't want to leave. And the Niners want him there. And I, and I don't blame him for wanting to secure the bag because the thing that people got to remember, the average NFL career is about two and a half to three and a half years. That's it. That's all you get. And if you're good enough and healthy enough to go longer than that, to get to contract number two, not just your rookie contract, but like the first one that people want to pay you. And especially if you're a top 10 at your position, oh man, you are going to get paid out the ass as you should because you don't know how long you were meant to play this game. Things could happen. Like, I mean, obviously um, he is not on the superstar level like that, but uh, obviously he's not on a superstar level like that, but we literally just witnessed DeMar Hamlin a couple years ago die on the field and have to be resuscitated. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you never know what could happen in this game. You could end up with injuries like we've seen Burrow get over and over again. That's kind of, he's playing well, but he gets thrown off. Tua, Tua had, what, three or four concussions in a row that could have, 
ended his career could have killed him. Like you had all of these types of situations that can happen in football. So I never blame a single player for securing your bag. Get paid, get your coin. Yes, you love the game. That's why you've been playing it. But most of the people that are playing this game are doing it to get paid. They're not here just to say Skull Vikings or how about them Cowboys. They're here to do that and get money. So pay CeeDee Lamb, God damn it. Honestly, pay Dak. I know some people are tired of him, but you tell me what quarterback solution you have. You believe in Trey Lance? Is that what you believe in? Cooper Rush? You believe in Cooper Rush? Yeah, he won a couple games, but you think Cooper Rush can actually second in MVP voting, second all, uh, second team all pro, all NFL. You think you think he can do that? Okay, prove it. But otherwise, to not pay these people, pay Micah. Motherfucker, you were the you were the goddamn most successful organization in sports. Period. Most profitable. Period. And you ain't paying people. Get rid of McCarthy. McCarthy, what, what has he done? Time management bullshit and all that. Go get a coach that actually can read. Like, Belichick apparently is interested. I would have Belichick down here and give him give him this defense. Are you kidding me? He, he's a defensive mind. You give him this defense? Shit. Look, man. All I got to say is, as far as IU goes, I hate the Steelers and I hate the Niners. I don't want you to be on either team, man, because I, I love your style of play. But knowing you want to stay home in the Bay... Get your bag. Do not flinch. And if you get shipped off to, to Steel City, man, at least you're playing for Tomlin, which means you'll always be in the conversation one way or the other. That's just a rough division, and the quarterback controversy is kind of up in the air about if Russell Wilson still has it, but he's kind of injured. If if Justin Fields can overcome his bad play his first couple of years, your better bet is to try and stay in San Francisco with the team that almost won a Super Bowl, but bag first. Get paid. What do you think? Am, am I crazy here about this whole idea about not getting your back? Should should he just shut up and take what they're offering? Or do you agree with me, man? Like, I mean, again, you don't know how long it's going to last. Let me know down in the comments. And that, friends, is the end of this episode of The Blurred Breakdown. I thank you so much for rocking with me uh, and checking all this out. Again, I apologize that I haven't been able to do more stuff this week. I'm hoping I can sort this computer stuff out so this doesn't happen again. And once the commercial is done, I should have some more time. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, man. Hit the notification bell. Throw a like on this. Let me know that you're enjoying this content. I hope you commented on all of this. I'll also break it up into clips so you can go and check those as individual videos out as well if you don't want to watch what I guess is about to be a 40-plus video. Uh, so there's that. There's a lot to talk about. But other than that... I just genuinely appreciate you. Some of the other stuff that I'll have once, again, the computer is settled, my schedule is settled, I'll get back to some of the reviews, uh, that new sketch I've seen you that's coming out, things like that. They, uh, things should hopefully slow down enough for me to be back on this and make it happen. But yeah, uh, and the, the main thing I'm going to try and do, it depends on what how the scheduling breaks out next week. Um, I'm going to try and stream some again. It's computer dependent, schedule dependent, but I will let you know about all that. You'll see me over on Capes and Cows. Been doing spot, uh, Spill the Tequila with uh, John Roca over on the Outlaw Nation. And we will be bringing Game Time back very soon, which is our dedicated show to uh, sports in the NFL. We really only do it during the NFL season for the most part, which still kind of blanket covers uh, the rest of the sports because, you know, the NBA will come back, all that kind of stuff. We'll probably talk about the end of the W. Uh, this season as we are getting into the last stretch post Olympic break. Uh, but yeah, that is it. That is everything, man. I got much love for each and every one of you. So till then y'all stay safe. Y'all be easy and I'll see you on the next one, man. Peace.